dear students well, welcome back to the lecture on nationality in the previous class we had a discussion on the uh, nationality in its introduction uh, variations in the rules and regulations governing nationality among different states and further consequences of such a difference in the rules and regulations governing nationality what are the important problems which the international community has faced as well as individuals and persons have faced all these things are discussed in the previous uh, lecture in today's class we will be looking into the second lecture where we will be broadly discussing the those four concepts which are which are seen on the slide first one is modes of acquisition of nationality second one is modes of loss of nationality and further distinction between nationality and citizenship and finally international importance of nationality these are the four important topics on which we will have a brief discussion and have an overview as to what the principles are involved in this area so first of all modes of acquisition of nationality how a person can acquire nationality of a state or a nation ways or modes in which they can acquire that's what is the first thing so acquisition of nationality by different means first one is either according to just solely or just sanguinis i hope you still remember that which we discussed in the previous class so there is variation in the rules governing the nationality but almost every state is going to take into consideration either one of them or both of them in deciding whether a person has got nationality one that is first one is just sanguinis and just sorry just solid sanguinis represents the nationality of the parents of a child at the time of its birth second one is just solely which is the its territory where the the child has taken birth these are the two important factors which will be taken into consideration of course at a different degree are uh, giving more stress on one of the factors and less stress on the other factors in this way different states have laid down their own rules governing uh, law dealing with nationality that's what we discussed in the last class so by birth first mode of acquisition of national nationality originally acquiring nationality of a state is by birth the at the time of birth few factors as i said these two factors will be taken into consideration by a state to decide whether the child has acquired the nationality of that nation first one is just solis that is the whether the place where the child has taken birth is within its territory or not that's one factor or or and along with that is what is the nationality of the parents of the child both these factors play a very significant role throughout the world in deciding as to which nation the child belongs to that's the first mode of acquisition of nationality by birth the factors are two two factors which will be taken into consideration first one is just solis just soli and second one is just sanguinis that's what we discussed Ap apart from birth birth is the most common mode of acquisition of nationality second one is naturalization third one is legitimation and fourth one is official grant naturalization when we are studying about the modes of acquisition of citizenship there also we come across with similar similar terms naturalization is one method through which one state is going to confer nationality to an alien a person who is not a citizen or a national of a particular country because of some reasons some specific reasons as per their own state law they will allow few people to get nationalization of the state get the nationality of a particular state through naturalization one of the most common incidents of getting nation and uh, nationality of a state through natural uh, through naturalization is when a, a woman marries a person who is of a different nationality then generally she may acquire the nationality of her husband so but it involves a process of course what is going to be the process what are the conditions to be fulfilled for getting citizenship and nationality through naturalization it 
differs from state to state there is no uniform rules under our own law under citizenship act 1955 we have a set of conditions for a person to get uh, citizenship through naturalization that's one method once a person gets citizenship through naturalization automatically he is also become a national of that state so because i said in the last class itself that once a person becomes a citizen automatically he is a national he is going to acquire nationality but a person who merely has nationality may not always have citizenship or he may not have all the rights of a citizen so naturalization is one more one method through which a person is going to acquire nationality legitimation is it is one one best example for legitimation is what was the decision taken recently by our uh, government as well as the law passed by our parliament regarding nrca ca act that is a law which legitimized the nationality of those people who fled pakistan bangladesh and uh, pakistan bangladesh and afghanistan due to religious persecution as we as as you may most of you may be aware of the provisions if you are christian a, a hindu or a sikh jain buddhist any of them who have fled pakistan or who fled um, this bangladesh or afghanistan to save themselves from religious persecutions they were they came illegally and they have settled in india now their nationality was legitimized through a law law has given them citizenship law is proposed to give citizenship law has been made or a proposal was there to give citizenship to all this all these people who came from these three neighboring countries to save themselves from religious persecution so at the time when they came in the beginning so for so many years even though they might have come from after uh, after independence after the commencement of the constitution for so many years they were here as illegal immigrants their stay was not legal but now they our last and last through caa their nationality was legitimized they were given nationality of india through this law so that is what is called as legitimation of nationality first method first method is birth second method is naturalization third method is legitimation and the fourth one is official grant for which elaborate provisions which you already studied in your constitution that is you have to file an application with the concerned authority prescribed by the central government and they are going to impose so many conditions as per the laws and rules which are going to be framed from time to time by the government so after you comply with all these requirements if at all the government or the concerned authority is satisfied that yes you are uh, you it is advisable to grant you citizenship or automatically nationality comes then you will get the nationality that is official grant of nationality no state under the international law has a duty or obligation to give nationality to any person it is a sovereign prerogative of each sovereign state whether to confer nationality or citizenship to someone who is not a citizen by birth or he is not a um, national by birth grant of nationality or grant of citizenship is purely a discretion and even supreme court including any court uh, for that matter in india they don't have any jurisdiction to question the decision which is going to be taken by the government or by the parliament regarding ascertaining as to who is a citizen and who is not a citizen even this is this is beyond judicial review because that is something which is a sovereign power being exercised by a state in deciding who has to be its national who should not be its national so official grant naturalization legitimation and before that the birth and at the, uh, in the first case birth through birth if you want to get nationality your parents nationality is going to be taken into consideration that's one factor or they may also take into consideration the territory where you have taken the birth these factors play an important role uh, of course at a different degree or different their importance may vary from state to state but those are the factors will be considered in deciding the nationality 
almost four or five four kinds of four modes of acquisition of nationality we discussed birth naturalization legitimation and finally official official grant official grant is going to be based on an application to getting citizenship and nationality under the municipal law for the time being in force finally subjugation or conquest of territory that is also one more mode of acquisition of nationality a state has uh, an independent state came under another sovereign state a sovereign independent state came under the sovereignty of some other state we call it as subjugation once a state come, comes under the subjugation of subjugation of another state who are all the persons who are the citizens of the former state which has come under the uh, uh, another independent sovereign state that state is going to lose its existence and all the population who all the people who are the nationals of that erstwhile state they also become acquire the nationality of the state under whose regime or under whose sovereignty that state has come so subjugation is also one more method through which a person may acquire nationality let, let me say take an example sikkim sikkim was not earlier part of india but subsequently the the the, 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 the administration there they passed a resolution ultimately they 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 came within the they asked for uh, coming under the sovereign regime of government of india or uh, state of india so it was accepted and sikkim became part of india now now who are all the people who are nationals of the erstwhile sikkim's nation as such whatever the name which could have been called those people they automatically get the nationality of india so whoever is a person who is part of who is who is who is from sikkim he is now a indian that is through conquest or subjugation this is subjugation conquest means you defeated a particular uh, nation another nation and you acquired their territory that is conquest you have conquested a territory then who are all the people who are there in that territory all those people they may they may become citizens of this state which has so conquered that territory so acquisition of nationality can happen through any of these methods first by birth second naturalization legitimation or official grant finally subjugation or conquest of a territory these are considered as important modes of acquisition of nationality many times this question has been asked in your exam moving further is the law, modes of loss of nationality yes if person doesn't have a nationality of a particular state he could have acquired this by, by any of these methods except the first one where the first method you have to take birth in the territory or your both your parents should be of a national of the particular state then you by you will get nationality by birth whereas all other nationalities it is something which you acquired subsequently by naturalization by legitimation um, by conquest or subjugation these these things happen subsequently initially you are not a citizen of the, are not a national of that particular country due to subsequent developments you have become its national this nation's national that's the mode of acquisition of nationality at the same time once you have been a national of a particular state there is even possibility of you losing that nationality there are few grounds on which a person who has got a nationality of a particular country or a nation may lose that nationality what is that release or renunciation release through a deed through a formal agreement or a contract whereby he says that he releases himself from the bonds of or the link or the legal relationship which that person has with the nation of which he was a national earlier i am an indian citizen and i am indian national i i want to come out of the shackles i want to come out of the relationship with my nation india and i want to claim myself is no more a part of india i am no more a member of the independent political community of indian state i will lose my nationality it can be based on an agreement based on an understanding it it may take different forms but you ultimately through a deed or through an instrument you you got yourself released from the rights and obligations or from your legal status or the relationship which you have with a particular state release renunciation you just uh, 
you sacrifice your uh, nationality or what you said you give up your nationality renunciation renunciation can happen in different ways maybe by expressly acquiring the nationality and citizenship of some other nations you are going to lose it from here. you are going to lose it here so release or renunciation is one more one more method of loss of nationality further deprivation on the one uh, as far as the first two are concerned you are act the concerned person he has a willingness or he has given his consent or he accepted of coming out of the nationality or he has accepted to renounce the nationality his consent or his involvement was there whereas in the second case is deprivation third case not second one first one is release second one is renunciation third one is deprivation in the deprivation the state on different grounds in different circumstances good they are going to deny the national or take back the nationality and citizenship whatever is given to you there may be hundred reasons for it and laws are going to the laws are there uh, 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 laid in laying down few conditions for a grant of citizenship through natural naturalization or through registration or based on an application if you have committed a breach of any of those conditions subject to which you have been conferred with the nationality and citizenship the state may take it back the state may deprive you the nationality whatever has been conferred by, conferred on you if you have committed a breach of undertaking which you have given to the state while you are getting the nationality or while you are getting the citizenship so deprivation is one more method where the state itself is going to take back the nationality and citizenship from you because of few reasons regarding violation or breach of your undertakings that's the second one third method of loss of nationality fourth one is long residence abroad for how many years it depends on each municipal law there is no general rule under international law that a particular person if at all he is away from his play, play his state of nationality he is going to lose his nationality no we don't have such a general rule as i said the rules and regulations are the law governing nationality has to be done by respective states through municipal law municipal laws are going to govern this even we under indian constitution we have a provision under section article 11 and based on the basis of which citizenship act was enacted in 1955 that is going to determine as to when a person is going to lose his is citizenship as well as nationality because of long residence abroad how many years it depends on each state's laws so these are considered as modes of loss of national different methods through which a person which a person who has already got a citizenship and nationality is now going to lose it release renunciation deprivation and long residence ab abroad are they are considered as the most important modes of loss of nationality moving further is the distinction between nationality and citizenship as i said whenever i take a class on this uh, nationality this confusion continues and students will just look at me whenever i try to explain that because they may not at times comprehend or understand what is the actual difference between nationality and citizenship they sounds to be very similar and we often get confused because our the concept it has to be studied or to be looked into with a different approach let us try to find out what is the actual difference between nationality and citizenship citizenship is connected with the relationship of the state with individual for the purpose of municipal laws for the purpose of municipal laws the rights and obligations arising out of municipal law on the state or on the national or the citizen whoever he may call so they, their mutual rights and obligations at the municipal level are going to be entirely determined by the citizenship further citizenship may confer fuller and wider rights within the state even that is we found that is what we found whenever we are discussing about fundamental rights all fundamental rights are not available to all persons some fundamental rights are available to everyone others are available only for citizens similarly we find we can find hundreds of such provisions in uh, our indian laws where few things can be exclusively done by indians own nationals or indians own citizens and outsiders may not be allowed to do few things so citizenship confers wider rights than 
then the rights which would be given to a person who is merely a national and not a citizen further so it in spite of this wider power in spite of this um, more involvement of uh, uh, more uh, regulation of the relationship between state and its uh, citizen citizenship is limited to its own territorial limit and further it is not going to be concerned with the rights and obligations which may be arising at the international level of a particular person so in spite of it is enjoying wider rights under constitution but still it falls short it falls short of the international status of nationality nationality is not a national status nationality is an international status citizenship citizenship is a national status it indicates the kind of relationship which a state is going to have with its citizens whereas nationality is going to give a international legal status to a particular person so this citizenship falls short of international status of nationality we can further have more elaboration or we can have more clarity and more better understanding with the example of an illustration so loss of citizenship does not mean loss of nationality some disabilities to a citizen may not have have an implications on his nationality so loss of citizenship does not mean loss of nationality so we try to let us try to understand this principle with the example of a case kahane versus parisi and austrian state this is one case where they have laid down few principles as far as loss of uh, loss of citizenship may not have an effect on loss of nationality what happened in this case jews of course you know that jews are those people who were persecuted by almost every nation in asia and europe except india that's what is india known for israelis people are most thankful to indians because they never persecuted jews jews faced problems everywhere and it is no exception even in romania romania is a one of european country so where jews in romania were denied many privileges they were they were they belong to romania but they were denied many privileges which were otherwise available for other citizens of romania and they were also subjected to many restrictions they were not allowed to do whatever other citizens of romania could have done severe restrictions have been imposed about the work they can do or the activities in which this jews can be involved in spite of such a differentiation between jews and rest of the population in romania you cannot say that those jews are not nationals of romania romanian state law might have denied citizenship rights to jews in spite of them being denied citizenship right they continue to be the nationals of romania similarly similar things similar things we also discussed under company law where we spoke about company becoming a citizen is it possible not at all possible so citizens are artificial persons legal persons they have no independent existence of their own they cannot think therefore they cannot be citizens but still companies can have nationality they may not have citizenship but they have nationality that is the difference so loss of citizenship are not conferring citizenship that itself doesn't mean that that entity is also not going to have nationality nationality is altogether a different position from that of citizenship so this is these are few important things which you should know as far as difference between citizenship and nationality nationality is a international legal status whereas citizenship is a relationship between a person and its state within the territorial limits of the state okay that's the difference so loss of citizenship does not means loss of nationality further international importance of nationality many a times questions are asked on this explain the international importance of nationality what we will be studying here is just an example is what is going to happen if at all i am a citizen i am a national of an indian of indian state what is its implication at the international level it is going to have wide ramifications it is going to have wider impact at the international level what are those impacts of a person being a uh, 
a national of a particular state what is that what are those uh, imp uh, factors which are going to explain as the importance of nationality at the international level under the international law first one is diplomatic protection abroad many times we when we go outside and we need some protection through diplomatic agents or consular agents i need protection so what is the basis for me to get protection is my nationality to the state if i am in an alien country or a foreign country my identity is going to be associated with my state and if at all i want to claim some diplomatic immunities or protections nationality is going to be the basis that is the importance of nationality at the international level or under the international law then state responsibility for the conduct of its nationals in the previous session previous chapter we discussed about the concept of state responsibility there we come across with common concept that the state is going to be responsible for its internationally wrongful acts we discussed when state is when we can say that state has committed an internationally wrongful act whenever its organs or its officials have done something which is which amounts to breach of duty imposed by international law then we say that state has committed a wrong state has and state will internationally wrongful act for which state is going to be held responsible whenever the act is that of the officials of the state or it is uh, by the organs of the state whereas as a general rule we discussed there that for a private person's private conducts you cannot hold state responsible at the international level but at the same time there also we discussed an exception whenever a nation is has failed in its duty under international law to prevent its national from committing an illegal act whereby causing injury to someone else then you can hold state responsible so ultimately how state is going to be held responsible it is solely based on the nationality of that person an individual's nationality may expose a state to international international level responsibility uh, that is one more important thing to think which we should know. state is going to be responsible for conduct of its nationals a person has committed certain wrongful act and his state failed in its duty to prevent that person from committing that act wrongful act or the state has failed to punish that person for wrongful act in both these instances why state is going to be responsible because state has not take taken sufficient measures to prevent one of its national from committing a wrongful act which is a duty of that state under international law then state is going to be responsible for the acts of its national second one is whenever a person has been guilty of a person who belongs to a particular nation has committed a crime and he needs to be punished and he is found in the state uh, to which he how he holds a nationality and state has not done anything state has not taken steps to punish a person who has been guilty of a wrongful act at the international level then state will also be held as responsible for such a inaction on the part of the state so here the sole basis for a state to hold be held responsible for an international wrongful act is the nationality of that person who has actually done this wrongful act that is one more imp importance of nationality at international level which have as a state okay state to which that person is a national shall have responsibility for internationally wrongful act committed by that person okay so this is these are the uh, two important uh, effects of inter uh, uh, nationality uh, or importance of nationality at the international level there are a few more uh, uh, factors which are going to give an indication to us as to what is the importance of nationality at the international level we will be discussing those things in detail in the next session so with this i will conclude today's class what we discussed is these are few things which we had a discussion first one is modes of acquisition of nationality we discussed almost some four to five modes are there five modes first one is by birth then by naturalization by legitimation and also the next one is by conquest or subjugation of the 
property and by application and grant of nationality we can acquire it loss loss can be through release or through a renunciation or through deprivation and also one of the last modes of uh, loss of uh, national uh, loss of nationality is that of what we discussed there is mode of loss of nationality is long residence abroad even that is considered as a mode of loss of nationality which we discussed finally we also had a discussion about this distinction between the nationality and citizenship so nationality is entirely a status which is going to be given to a particular person for the purpose of its his rights and obligations at the international level whereas the citizenship is purely concerned with the relationship between state and that person within the state while applying the municipal laws this is the distinction between as nationality and citizenship we also discussed one example where the where the uh, there is a finding as to when we can say that even though there is loss of nationality even though there is loss of, loss of citizenship it may not necessarily imply that there is also loss of nationality nationality may continue that's what we discussed so further we also started our discussion on international importance of nationality almost we discussed two factors which gives us an idea or indication as to how far nationality is important at the international level that is one is concerned with providing diplomatic protection abroad and second one as is as we discussed uh, in this today's class the second one is that is state responsibility for conduct of its national state can be held responsible so next so these are few important things which we discussed in today's class in the next session we will continue our dis our discussion on international importance of nationality we will discuss that in greater details in the next session so thanks to all of you for joining this class thanks thank you very much